I found the subject I want, but it's going to do the same thing that happened the other time, which is the sun is to my back, so it's going to be reflecting off the canvas, and you're just not going to be able, it's going to be all washed out, and you're not going to be able to see anything. I already ruined one that way. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to change my subject. I think I'm going to change where I'm standing while I'm painting it. Yeah, this subject matter is wild. Check this stuff out. Okay. Yep, we're going to try this and we're going to go fast and see if we can do it. Got a, I grabbed a couple of extra palette knives just in case and I got some uh, some legit full full body titanium white which I may use. to hurry do the old underpainting quick the usual the brush that's cut off here gnarly brush I brought a lot of extra brushes today too which I just don't see myself getting to use Horizon's low. Low horizon, which means you're gonna come up. No, we want you about in the middle. About. It goes off and fades out here. See, but this needs to go here. Too. So it's all screwy right now. What I should have done is uh, I had an idea. Let's change up the technique a little. Should I do that? That's really dangerous. The, the technique I've been doing recently, I should stick with that. Um, but, and I don't know why I'm choosing this, because this is the right color. But this is the only bright color I have. been doing much thin you know like thick over thin it's all been pretty uniform brush strokes and this is real thick over thin the line I'll try some thick on thin I 
just going to put this guy in the middle, but you're relegated to... All right. Throw that in. I'm already like a bunch of techniques past what... <laughs> what I wanted to do. So I'm just like... Uh, Paint's gray. Palette should be uh, the same as before. Ultramarine blue, Paint's gray, uh, burnt sienna, right? They make the complement that is the main complement. This is uh, yellow ochre. Thalo blue, which I've been using, and then I started to do this Thalo turquoise as well. No, these are the grays. Azo yellow. The colors I used here were like uh, Azos too, like those super intense colors I've been using. This hands yellow opeo. And uh, it's quinacridone red. Yeah, users of cadmium reds and yellows probably uh, we're gonna cringe at, at those, but you know, I like to keep it non-toxic. Dude, what the hell? And with this wind, like it's
That's why I don't like that for the regular just white for plain air. It's just brutal. It's just, it, it's so pigment dense, it dries real quick. Just, I don't think we're going to have time to do a normal painting. This is not, not going to happen. So let's have some fun.
more. Real quick. There we go. How everything's just chunking up already. This is brutal. Look at this shit. I may paint this tonight, just uh, Problem with using too much medium, the acrylics, is your it just throws your values all off. Acrylics thinks that hydration is value. Acrylic paints, they are not. So your paint is wrong. It doesn't know what color it is until it's dry.
There's just nothing here. Dude. Yeah, it's brutal. Fuck, come on, dude.
screw that up. Dang, this is just not my... What am I doing, dude? It's almost good. Dang it. All right, that's all I can stand to watch of this debacle. A lot of it's just like the lights changing so fast. I'm trying to capture too many things, and the the angle's weird. I, I can't just go one to one, you know. So I should have picked a better painting angle. Should have started earlier. Should have, should have, should have. So it's all good. It's all good. Uh, I'm gonna turn this into an actual painting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glaze everything kind of push it back and electrify the color a little bit. I'm going to go off some of my photo reference. And um, what's nice about the glaze is it'll sort of resurface everything. So I can do um, that the, a real slick, uh, wet, kind of a wet technique on top of it. And um, I think this will be a good ground for something. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want it to go to waste. And I liked the initial vision of it. It was pretty cool. Um, and uh, so hopefully I have some decent reference of it. Maybe just do it from memory. I don't know. And kind of fudge it or whatever. But, you know, general color study. This is good. Good enough. Yeah, I screwed up a bunch of stuff. That blue there. There was a great haze. But the problem is I, these were two different times. These were two different lighting conditions. So I had this great neutral coming down or faded. Then lighting conditions changed. It turned into a haze. And I don't know why I even changed it. Um what I'm probably going to do is end up pushing that whole thing back. Um, this whole mountain range is a little too dark anyway and bringing this forward. So this is sort of like the mid ground emerging from the haze. And then the big foreground comes in front, um, play up this tree a little better and another building there. And I, I should, it's like all the elements were there. That's why I chose it. It's just, um, it was too dynamic and I just wasn't prepared for like trying to capture something that dynamic from here. It's just, um, it's a nice little spot. There it is. Look at this freaking monster. All right. I am back home. Uh, okay, so what happened was, what the hell is my, focus, okay, come on, come on, shima, here it is. All right, what I have, I probably should actually uh, get the right colors out first. Red shade, paint is gray, possibly. Interference, color, just take the whites. Okay. It should have all the colors I need right here. yellow medium all right so these are the colors so what's going on 
Well, what is going on was that you saw this painting come through yesterday. Um, I managed to snap a few photos before I left. And I left in dismay and disgust. Um, and unfortunately, uh, I did not get the plain air painting I want. But I did decide that I was going to do something with it. Because I'm looking at this. Okay, so if you remember, and maybe I'll put the links up to this, but on my other paintings, um, my full like sit down in studio paintings, not plain air, um, I'll start off with very odd colors and very textured undertones that are really about like shapes and values. And the color and final, let's say, values and luminosity and stuff, um, I can alter with glazes, okay? And so with this, um, there's all sorts of color I think is funky. I played up this too much. Um, you can see how just stark it is, which I kind of like in that we move through blues and greens and reds and, you know, we're, we're actually doing some interesting things with bold color. You know, we have purple blue, you know, red blue and a green blue up here, that kind of, that kind of stuff. Um, I, I really like it. I, I like that as some under painting kind of things. But what you see me do on the full, full painting is um, I'm always altering these colors by, by adding some kind of glaze where I can push and pull and, and nudge everything where I want to. Um, the one thing you didn't see very much on, on the previous paintings is when I actually introduce white um, into the glaze to make a semi-opaque glaze, which is I actually use for um, atmospheric effects, okay? So this should be interesting. What, what I've done here, uh, I, I snapped a few photos. Um, I kind of like what's going on. I kind of hate what's going on. I don't know where, but either way, I'm going to sort of push up the finish of this. And I'm going to kind of do this Hudson River School thing where you can see what's going on here. Um, I may, th this is actually should be up closer to the foreground. And um, there was just some funky like, like a power box and things here, um, which I don't mind putting in human structures. You can see I, I like that's the whole point, but but that particular one was just kind of like ugly and right there. But but anyway, this is going to go um, from here to here, so I'm going to alter that, um, and then I'm going to put that shadow in front, which is more of a shadow green. And so what we're going to have is this Hudson River School thing where we have this bright uh, sky. It's going to be a little pale, but bright, but sort of a shadowed mountain where it moves into the foreground with some highlights. And then um, and then this this splash of light, which is a highlight right here and then another shadow here. So we're going to be alternating highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow. Um, and that's that's the whole point of, of turning this failed um, uh, failed plein air painting, which is, you know, has some benefits and, you know, it's got some basic color and basic composition, basic composition. I'm just fine with, I look at the photo reference. I moved everything around slightly, just fine. It was, you know, mushed and stretched and I did some things with it just to, to make it fit on this, on the sort of square here. Um, there's some, there's some thickness. I like, I like some of the basic color movement. Uh, I like the the basic mood here where we see this sort of shadowed mountain with this highlight here and just a, a few alterations should be should be great and um, and this is this very much puts this square into the range of my studio paintings rather than plain air paintings right the studio painting you can work and rework and fix and alter whatever you want and in a studio painting something like this would just be a sketch anyway you sketch with color a sketch with texture a sketch which i'm sketching everything all the time and um, like I said before, you just have all these layers where one layer is sort of vibrating. You have another layer over it and it's doing something else. And another layer over that is doing... So who knows? I may get up, 
get pens here by the end. I, I don't know. Um, but uh, let's... Uh, I'm actually running some errands, so I want this to dry in the meantime, and I'm just going to do some experimental stuff. Um, this is pouring medium, this is self-leveling, and then this is um, the the artist loft gel. This is like, I, I have no idea what the quality of this is, but it was cheap and I use it for bulk stuff. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this. Um, I may use it just to like thicken this up so I don't have to use quite as much and then apply it with this and hope that the peaks sort of um, mellow out. Um, a lot of times I see the thing is this is, um, this is, this isn't, this isn't very sharp gel. Okay, this gel, this artist loft stuff, is really it. Um, it it doesn't hold peaks very well. It all sort of sags a little bit and has these more gentle kind of peaks, which is just fine. Um, but you can do this. Um, you can do the uh, impasto glazing technique with very sharp peaks in your gel, because then when you scrape over it with another layer of gel you're sort of putting gel into the valleys of the layer before it and you start getting very interesting color interplay, right? It's so interesting and it's so thick that you see into it, right? And it's the effect you can only see in real life. It doesn't get captured on, um, on reproductions right now i've had a couple of shots here and there where i can move a camera around and start to get some of the depth created like that but really these are fine art techniques meant for gallery level work that you just can't you cannot achieve in reproduction and if you ever wonder what that li looks like well like go to go to museums with those with you know ancient <laughs> with with paintings from you know 500 you know, six, 800 years ago or whatever, when they're doing layer after layer of, of, um, you know, uh, what you'd, what, uh, probably linseed oil or something where they start to build up transparency and luminosity, like in the skin of Christ or something like that. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's what, what this is, is, a, a trying to emulate those kind of depth like effects, but with, a, with acrylic, but with certain properties that only the acrylic has. So, um, I don't quite know how it's going to turn out. I'm just going to wing it here. Um, because, uh, I'm planning on, you know, painting over it anyway. So I'll probably use Payne's gray up front. Um, Let's see, did I get the Payne's Gray? Okay, so I'll probably use a little Payne's Gray and maybe Ultramarine up front, but probably mainly Payne's Gray, maybe with the Payne's Gray and Burnt Sienna, right? I'm gonna use the, um, then move from that into the um, Azo Gold, which is like super intense um, here. I should actually use the Azo Yellow Gold here. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Uh, the only problem there was that it was in my fine or my plain air setup. And I gotta just dig it out. So I'll put this one back anyway. And so what will you recognize from these? Well, these are what I used in plain air, underpainting wise, uh, if I'm here. Should I use the violet? No. I mean, I could. I could use a little bit of violet going to blue in the background. Maybe I'll try that. Because I got to try something. Uh, what's. Oh, shoot. I don't know where the Van Dyke Brown was, which is not good should have that nice warm Van Dyke. Please be in here and not stuff somewhere in another. Yeah, so it looks like I dumped my Van Dyke in some container that I don't remember where, unless it's just sitting out there in the, oh, here it is.
So the question is, should I use Payne's Gray or Van Dyke in front? Okay, so Payne's Gray, Van Dyke, super transparent, next le level, probably f mostly transparent, and then I'm going to use some translucency here and maybe get back up to uh, no translucency here. Should I use the phthalo and ultramarine up here? Just uh, transparency, not not the semi-transparent. So what does that even mean? Well, it means means the first thing I have to do is mix. this uh, a lot of the reason why I'm oops, I'm gonna use this those obscene um, is because it's a little thicker so uh, even though I won't be able to see the white I'll be able to feel it with the transparency. Or sorry, I'll be able to feel how mixed in it is with the difference of consistency, not transparency. It's probably a way bigger pilot knife than I need right now. And this is just going to be the slightest bit of tint in an otherwise uh, transparent glaze usually the glazes will kind of darken things but I want to throw this slight bit of tint in there just for the mountains just to create a bit of luminosity so I'm gonna go purple ultramarine then uh, phthalo so I'll start with a pool of ultramarine. It's already only semi-transparent, ultramarine. It's, uh, I'm not even sure how transparent it is. I know as a tight, it's not completely opaque, um, but it's good for some kind of semi-transparency because just of the way it handles light light can actually penetrate the the pigment body it's not totally opaque like uh, a lot of the modern colors yeah so leveling you know what i'm already going back on what i just said Self-leveling is good, but I think I'm just going to use it to sort of sweeten up the... Sorry, I'm going to extend with this color. I should use Utrecht if I'm taking this seriously, but... Um, sorry, I should use Utrecht gel if I'm taking this seriously, but... Transparent as one might think. 
is way too strong for a glaze. I used a lot of uh, pigment with it. And again, so you can see the self-leveling gel doing its job. Um, I extended it with a medium body a little bit. Um, now I'm going to bring the actual tint in there. Um, it's a lot more than I was planning on using, and I'll tell you why. You have no idea. I have no idea what that's even going to look like. And that's like way too much, you know, because I'm trying to get it to the right consistency. I know. It's a problem is just with the way everything dries with this, it's uh, it's like just flying blind. This is the worst like paint system ever. It's 
So as we know, our main complement here is burnt sienna, which I just laid down. Which you see how beautiful that that Utrecht burnt sienna pigment is. Woo, woo, beautiful. Semi-transparent. Two, or I, I don't know. There's some kind of luminosity or transparency in it, so that looks great. And um, so I'm going a little bit gray with this here. This last little pool. Whatever shall we do? Tiniest bit. There you go. Oh, that's ultramarine. Dude, 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 dude. And then I'll use the rest of this pool for the top as well. way too thick. I mean, maybe not, but we'll see.
permanent. But that's okay. Look at that. All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. Find my paint bucket that, of course, I didn't fill before this. Uh, water bucket. Water bucket. Is it? Oh, that's not right. Shit. So that was all the stuff with white and some transparency in it. Some white transparency. And you know, if I need to put another glaze up there, I will. That's Van Dyke. Oh no, sir. That's Payne's gray. And bleh. Van Dyke. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do this. The light is way better here. I can see the color better. Uh, I have not perfected my uh, overhead sort of desk light method here. Uh, I did a lot of a lot of the paintings you've already seen. I did um, kind of standing up as well, um, and so. It was like very late at night, so a lot of it didn't quite work out. Or at least it was somewhat muted, most of it. my insistence on being lazy about technique. Oh, I know. It's called art school. <coughs> oh, 
This is a fucking thing. Come on, dude. fucking yellow into the sorry my language i didn't mean to get the yellow into that area there but i'll have to live with it um actually last night there was some real interesting color going on in this sky uh, i wish here i actually had more orange in the mid ground here that's not that's going to end up being the exact green that I didn't want. That I didn't want. Stupid. Stupid thing. Screw that up too. I tainted my pool of base color there. Seconds. 
so I'm a little pickier in uh, about color right now than I, I would normally be because in the, my last painting I got careless and I put some warm color once in this place on the ground where it should have been cool, kind of cool, like picking up um, sky color cool, right? So it, it uh, you know, it's just going to be no re-recovering that. Anyway, um, it was a tiny little um, adulteration of color at the time that really, really, really bugged me. Like way more than I thought it would because I'm usually pretty flippant about, about color. Oh, no. <laughs> Probably just fine. It's too much. It's way, 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 way too much. all I dare to do. In general, you've probably seen this, but this is like a Sumi brush. Um, love it. Very, very soft, delicate bristles. Um, all of this uh, I should keep and use for something, but I'm not because I don't have time. Uh, the Hansa yellow. Woo, look at this. Playing with color. No, I'm spreading it even so it dries even so I can basically peel it off on one go. Um, way too much waste. I don't usually do this. I usually have two or three things going. So I always have somewhere to put extra color. 
Um, that's the beauty of a sketchbook. You get really divergent in sketchbooks, and I just didn't have it set up um, here today because it was kind of a last-minute thing before I ran out. I figured I could get, if I finish this now, it'll be dry by the time I get back, and I can paint on it and actually do some real work on it tonight. Um, I wish I would have put some more here, but we'll see how it goes tonight, and um, whatever is what it is now. All right, so look at this. Look at it. This is what happens when you properly, <laughs> I hope it's properly. Uh, look at that, it, it turned out good. It turned out really good. I'm trying to make sure it doesn't get uh, inside so like the glare from everything is crazy. But you can kind of see You can kind of see how it looks. Um, I, I'm just uh, deploying uh, my palette again. I'm using my exact same palettes from the original painting and what I've been using for. Actually, I will. Talking and thinking. Okay, yeah, I'm using my, my same plain air palette, so it's the same palette I've been using for you know for a month now, doing the plain air stuff. Um, the reason why actually I'm using it from all this stuff because I'll probably have to refill it anyway, right? Um, I just figured you know I might as well um, if. These things can actually dry, like it can actually dry out inside these things. And you know, if something happens, you never know if you um, have the opportunity to to use this stuff, or if something happens and you won't get to it for a week, and then you half of it dries out or more, you know, something like that. So um, I'm just making sure that I might as well use the stuff I've already used, right? Where I've already deployed for this. Uh, the one big difference I'm using uh, titanium white and not the outside, not the stuff I've been using outside. Just Utrecht titanium white. So what exactly is happening here? Well, um, I, I, I used to do this more Gosh, I hate that this is such a goopy color. What the heck? Liquitex is usually very even and very buttery. This particular Liquitex uh, color's been just goopy as hell. I think it's a an azo yellow. Uh, azo yellow medium. 
Anyway, um, so one of the things that I used to do, or I experimented with for a while, was having the neutralized colors on an inside ring and then the, the more intense ones on the outside ring. I, I, I ended up just mixing, and so you have a, a secondary color set on on the inside, you know, and I guess technically I've, I've called it tertiary, saying, thinking that maybe only the, like red, yellow, and blue are the, you know, on the color wheel, those are the, you know, single colors, and then the secondary is like green, orange, and you know, yada, yada. But um, as you mix, either way in a palette, you have intense colors or tube colors, and then they have the secondary layer that you sort of mix from there in these pools of color. And you've, you've seen it before, you can see, you see it a lot on the big paintings I did, but um, I'm just kind of doing that here. I'm kind of trying to figure out where to put the really intense stuff. And I, I kind of put the intense um, blues and greens. I mean, these are thalo turquoise and thalo blue. Um, uh, you know, I guess technically they should be on an outer ring too, but, um, you know, if you have a red and a yellow here, but, you know, the, you know, the, the sort of brown, I mean, the Sienna, the burnt Sienna is like incredibly red. It's a very red brown, um, you know, and then yellow ochre, and then you just have the more intense yellow and the more intense red one ring out. I, I don't know. It's not, it doesn't fit perfectly, but it's, it's like close enough. Um, oh, I guess the last thing I should do is, uh. It's just the gray, multi-gray. So the real question is, what medium do I use on here? Uh, I'm going to use matte medium. This is high gloss right here, but I'm going to use matte medium just to kind of get some separation for, for now. Boy, I don't know what to use. So a couple of new brushes. I saw this from a YouTuber. Uh, everyone I'm sure who pays attention to stuff, to art, fine art, painting online. Um, 
I'm, I'm sure knows of this guy. His name is, uh, I think, uh, Peter Titian or something. And so this is a dagger. Never really used it before. I don't really, uh, I, I never use dagger brushes. What I liked was when I saw him use it, he had some incredibly fine lines he was able to make with it. But then, of course, you have this, this sort of other angle. And I kind of, um, I want to see some of those angles. I want to see what I can do with it. But I also want to see what I can do with the trees there. And like the, the glare is pretty brutal. All right, so now I have the mic. So I don't know, I don't know where to go. I don't, want, don't know where to start. So to start with, I'm going to use this scrubber, a pretty scrubby brush here. Um, one of the reasons why I like to use such slick surfaces and slick color, it's like if you can't blend, you know, if it's hard to like blend two colors in, like if you're going kind of thin, um, look what happens when you have a medium and a color and a color on top of it on a slick surface. I can actually start to blend and create blend effects as if it were oil. So it's kind of interesting. So I use a lot of techniques like this back in the day. I did, I used to do classical studies. I did a few Bouguereau paintings and like, and like that's kind of how you did it. You just um, use this slick, slick surface in order to get some of the very fine, fine blending. And then, you know, you'd go thick when you want something.
See, this is why, you see, I just try to get, I just try to grab a little bit of that. A little bit of that white, and it didn't work. I'm using very light color, very light. Uh, come on, dude, let's just switch here. It's, like a, it's just too, it's just too heavy for this technique sometimes. There we go. There we go. Dang, this uh, dagger is crazy. I've never used it before. I'm liking the shapes. Really good for cloud shapes. Considering this, this is good because these initial shapes, um, they can be flat, you know. I don't need a ton of. Um, I don't need a ton of like mass with them yet, so I. It really, what's more important, I think, is the shape, and the the variance, the variability in the shapes you can get with this dagger is real nice, dude. Real nice. Let's try. And um, see later, the thick will come in when I when I put highlights in. I don't I don't know if we'll actually get there, but
was so close to the right value and I didn't keep up with it because I, it's, I was afraid it was going to get darker. See, and I went a little lighter and I don't know if that's going to be good.
Wow.
Yeah, so this is really not, not the best for some of these angles. trying to make a, a visible change in the color in this shadow. I want this shadow to become very red. I'm not quite sure how bright to make it.
Meh. Sorry. <laughs> you probably don't hear. I'm listening to uh, someone watching the movie Snatch. And, and like Brad Pitt's character is like, it's for his ma. <laughs> his what? And then all the, all the, whatever they're called, chime in at the same time. His ma. <laughs> it's, it's great. I didn't realize I was saying that though. All right, I have no idea if that looks good or not. We'll have to wait for some time.
Well, that's better.
don't know what to do with the rest of this. I don't like wasting that much, but I just can't do it. Um, I'm liking, uh, really liking this. I decided to leave this real loose up here. Um, uh, this, I'm just fudging all of this. I'm just kind of making it up. Um, I hope I was able to leave enough of the ambience created by uh, the glaze. I really like the glaze. It always creates great ambiance, but then you have to kind of be able to preserve it at, through the rest of the painting. I don't know if I did or not. Um, it's, it's the kind of, I say things like that all the time. And the reason why is like, I kind of have to, um, I kind of just have to like, let it sit. Again, not crazy about the tree. I got to work on my trees, man. Woo. But I like it so far.
I don't I don't know what I'm doing here. I really don't. I kind of want to put some kind of detail on here that's interesting. But I don't it doesn't seem to have done what I wanted, so and I'm afraid to like overwork it because I think I've already overworked it. trying to do is put some sort of uh, kind of uh, tech stuff on it but I probably just should leave it simple you know I can do that later I'm just gonna leave it All right, well, I am loving the uh, dagger. Um, I don't even know what to do with this. <laughs> it's not really that. I kind of even know. Uh, looks cool, though. It's cool, I guess. Um, I'm not crazy about the shape of the mountains. So I, I may fix something over here. Um, probably do that now I'm not gonna
All right. I'm done for now.